there you go, Clint. Your pick. Yeah, these are all film classics. How about a, uh... Ah, here we go. A Bogey and Bergman. Casablanca, wartime romance. Not a dry eye in the living room. High noon. What one man can do when the right woman needs him. I'll tell you what. After our little dinner at Ace's, and hearing Alex go on and on and on about nothing except her upcoming wedding, what do you say we listen to or watch something that is perfectly mindless? You know, all action, no thought, and absolutely no romance. Hmm? What's the matter? These are classic films. Can you think of a classic film with no romance? Come on, yeah. This is sad. This is really, really Hello. sad. What is? Clint yes. Buchanan. Oh, I am. You? you need a woman in your life. I'm going to find you a woman. I am. After all, I'm a Jewish mother. I can do that. Speaking of uh, Jewish mothers, honey, yours is on the phone. Oy vey, such misogas. What? Never mind. Hello, Mama. You know something, big brother? What? I think Nora's on to yeah. something. Why would it... You've been moping around ever since you and Vicky split up. When is it Don't you think it's time that you got yourself Where? back on track? Well, we're on his back. Oh, good Lord. Who is it? It's Vicky. What in the world is she doing here? Vicky! God, there is no time to argue. You've got to help me. Help me convince her that I don't love her anymore. Oh, I have told you over and over. You simply cannot ask something like this. She is your fiance, and you love her dearly. I have to do this. Sloan, this is wrong. Ben. Sloan? Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. What a surprise. Jesse and I got home this afternoon, and you weren't there, so I decided I simply had to come to where you were. Oh, God, I've missed you so much. You're going to introduce me to your friend. Oh. Look at me. Look at me. Something I need from you. I will never ask this again. Just this one. Just this one. Say. Say. Tell me. way that I am. And I've felt for so long. You feeling what I'm feeling. You already know. Say it out loud. Say it out loud. Now we know, we understand. Could have been. I can't even think about that, Marty. I do, though. Well, I thought she was around here someplace. I think she went this way. Oh, yeah, here she is. Hey. Oh, Cord. You know, I was uh, um, looking for Marty around here, and I thought that she went this way, but look. Can't find her anywhere. When I guess when you're wrong, you're you were wrong. Oh, there, there you are, Marty. Oh. Um, your friend here, Dylan. He was um looking for you. 
Thank you. I'm sorry. Were you, you were looking for me? Yeah, I kind of lost track of you after I went to get these. And I said, I know exactly where she went. So I came looking for you, but I couldn't find you. But um, all's well that ends well, huh? Hi, Andrew. Blair. Hi, Court. Hey, Reverend, how you doing? Uh, I think I already know who you are. My sister talks about you all the time. Dylan Moody. Right. Luna's, Luna's brother. Yeah. It's a pleasure to meet you. Darlene's always telling me I need to get into your church on Sundays. So. Yeah, she's right. Any day, it's fine. Doors are always open at St. James. You know, my sister thinks she thinks the world of you. Well, your sister always sees the best in everybody. I'm sorry. I disappeared for a little while. I am. Um, well, I needed to talk to Andrew, and all of a sudden you yeah, were there. Uh, Marty's been putting together this petition to put Todd Manning back in prison. We've been working on that. Oh. Is everything all squared away? Yes. Yes. Good. Why don't we head over here and eat these things? Right, that'd be great. Okay. See ya. Nice meeting you. Yeah, we'll see you later. Listen, Andrew, why don't you join us? I mean, come on, we're just walking around the fair, you know, kind of people watching, that kind of thing. <laughs> Boys Club did a great job putting this whole thing together, didn't I? I couldn't believe the turnout they had. Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's a beautiful night. Uh, Andrew, where is Cassie? Oh, she's at home, but maybe with the baby. She's at home. You know, I bet that uh, Cassie would like the fair, too. Sure, Don't she, you think? she would, yes, very much. Huh. So, is Marty all right? No, actually, she's very upset, you know. Um, we were rape at the hospital and Todd Manning being out again. She's extremely upset. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine that's uh, very difficult for her. It's a good thing she ran into her minister then. Oh, yeah. Talk about luck. Okay, Mom. I love you, too. Bo, about your little matchmaking routine, just forget it, okay? It's just something I've been noticing for the past few months here, Clint. I mean it, Bo. Okay, forget right. it. I mean, my love life is none of your business. What's the matter, honey? You okay? What? Oh, yeah. No. My father's going in for surgery tomorrow. Well, what's the matter? What happened? Well, they found a, a, a growth on his back, and, um... Well, they told Mama that they thought it was probably benign, but... Oh, boy, I feel like I'm being paid back for that time that I lied to you. Wait, what? Well, when I, when I wanted you to think I'd gone out of town, and I told you that my father was being operated on. <sighs> just forget about that. Th this has nothing to do with that. I know, I know. It just, just kind of hit me out of the blue. Your parents live outside Chicago, don't they? Uh, yes. Well, when are you leaving? Say so your dad's gonna be operated on tomorrow? Well, I can't go, not now. Well, if you stay here, you're gonna be worried sick. You said yourself on the way home in the car, this is the lightest caseload that you've had in years. Well, I know that, but we're, uh, yeah, I can't go. What if Rachel needs me? Rachel is going to law school. She's gonna be swamped with work. <sighs> yeah, but we... Hank's brother hanging around. Has R.J. been bothering her? Well, not as far as she's concerned, but there's... I'm definitely not leaving town unless I know exactly what R.J. is up to with my daughter. Here's what I want the card to say. To Rachel, my only friend, what would I do without you? Thanks for believing in me, your loving Uncle R.J. Your eyes. Now, when do you think you can deliver those flowers? Sloan has told me so much about you. I really must say I feel as if I already know you. Yes, I've certainly heard a lot about you too, Vicky. Your house is just uh, along the bay a little bit, right? And I hear it's absolutely beautiful. Well, thank you. It's not far. I do hope you're going to enjoy our Chesapeake weather this time of year. Oh, you know something? It doesn't matter as long as I'm with Sloan. Uh, <laughs> nice weather is just an added bonus. Now, what happened? I didn't expect you back from Arizona for another day. Nothing really happened. I, I just wanted to come home, that's all. Uh, and you weren't there. And Andrew told me where you were, so I just decided to come down and surprise you. Well, you did that. You surprised me. <laughs> 
I'm sorry. I should have called first, shouldn't no, I? But I couldn't no, wait. No, no. Darling, you look a little pale. Are you all right? I'm fine. Just yeah. fine. Yeah. I do wish you had come to Arizona. At least the sun might have put some color in your cheeks. Yes, that would have done me some good. How are the repairs going? Well, the flood damage is... Uh, it's not a problem anymore. It's all been taken care of. Well, oh, good. Um, Beverly, did, did your house have flood damage as well? Flood damage? No, no. Uh, I didn't have any damage. Beverly's house is on much higher ground. Oh, well, I guess you were lucky then. Yes, I was. You know, I really do have to be going. You oh. all have a lot to talk about. Oh, well, that's a shame. Can't you stay just for a while? Yes, please. I'll get something for us to drink. Oh, that would be nice, sweetheart. You know, I've wanted to meet Beverly for so long now. Finally, we'll have a chance to chat. wonderful stories about you two, how you met in grade school and fell in love and then everyone expected you two to get married? Yes, well, eventually we went our separate ways. I mean, Sloan met Becky when he was at West Point. I met Stephen at Johns Hopkins. I understand your husband uh, died the same year that Sloan lost his wife. Yes. Something else we went through together. At least you had each other. I, I must say, I'm so glad that you were here for him now, you know, while I was in Arizona, because this house meant the world to me. It was my pleasure. Good. I felt so awfully selfish, you know, being out there in Arizona, enjoying myself with my daughter while he was here dealing with all these miserable problems. Although I had tried to cancel the trip in the very beginning, but he would not hear of it. Absolutely insisted I go, have a good time, said enjoy yourself. As usual, he wanted to deal with his problems all by himself. <laughs> yes. He can be so stubborn sometimes, far too proud to ever ask for help. Yes, he is too proud, and it's a fault. I just wish he would realize that kind of pride is not a virtue. If he would just understand that he could trust the people who love him and know that they would help him gladly because they love him, My goodness. Sounds as if your friend has some advice she really wants you to hear. I'll tell you what. I'm going to keep an eye on this RJ. That way you can go to Chicago and you can be with your folks. I am worried about Rachel. Well, then I'll have a squad car follow Rachel around all the time. She is going to be fine. I promise. Are you trying to get rid of me? <sighs> yeah, I just love being lonely. <laughs> I love you. Well, I love you, too. Well, I guess I better go make an online reservation. Oh, I gotta clear off my desk. Oh, I'm gonna go to the office. That's what I'll do. And I'll clear off my desk and call the reservation you, from there. You're gonna go to the office now? Well, I have to clear off my desk, don't I? <laughs> You're the one that wanted me to go to Chicago, didn't you? Well, don't worry. I'll be back later tonight to kiss you goodbye properly. Clint, I guess I'll see you when I get back. Mm. You take care. And best wishes for your father. Thank you. Bye. Don't worry about Rachel. Touch your hot dog. I know, I'm just not that hungry. Yeah, they're not that good when they're hot. They're really disgusting when they're cold. Ugh. Here, let me take it. Thanks. Yeah, a little earlier they had a band playing. Ooh, they were good, huh? Yeah, you know, I think everyone knows that tonight is uh, one of the last good nights of the season. Winter comes soon, huh? Hm. Would, would you would you excuse me for just a moment, please? 
sure? You want some ice cream? I would love some. Great. Just one scoop, though. Surprise me. <laughs> All right. Are you okay? Of course not. Are you? Wishing things were different isn't going to change anything. Dylan, I've had a really long day. You want me to walk you home? Or... Yeah, I'd like that. Bye. Bye. Nice to meet you, Rick. Nice to meet you, too. Blair, I have never worn a watch. Well, you should get one. I bet you Cassie's missing you right now, don't you think? Yeah. I better get home. I think this will be better than watching a movie. I get the feeling that the movies that Nora and I like are probably not quite your You know taste. what? You got a lot of nerve. What? Well, giving me advice on my love life, and if it wasn't for me, you'd be here all alone. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Just like all those weeks last month when she was gone. Clint, she can't help it if her dad needs an operation. Oh, I know that, but even her last night here, and she goes off to the office? She may be a compulsive workaholic, but she's my compulsive workaholic. <laughs> Might have known you couldn't stay away from me. Come on in, baby. Oh, I'll cut get the you. small talk, RJ. This isn't a social visit. I want to get something settled. Right here, right now. Sweetheart, would you excuse me just for a moment? I need to go inside. I'll be back. I'll be here. Sloan cannot do this. You cannot do it. Vicki is a sweet and a lovely woman, and she is devoted to you. You just cannot do this. It'll break her heart. Yeah, I'm doing it for her. Besides, it will not work. I mean, the very idea that you would tell her that you do not love her anymore is absolutely absurd. I'm doing it for her. I love her. I want her to be happy. Why should she spend a few months of sadness and grief to be left alone with a string of horrible memories? I've thought about this. There's a man who loves her. You mean that? Yes, her ex-husband. And she and Clint can be happy together. They have a family. He loves her. He's a good man. But Sloan, that is not your decision. If she decides sometime that she wants to go back to her former husband, that is up to her. Now, Sloan, please, look, I will sit here with you while you tell her the truth. Please. No. Sloan, if you do not tell Vicky the truth, I will. Excuse me. Vicky. What did you mean? What are you going to tell me the truth about? Tell you what, Nora. I'm gonna pour myself a glass of water. Why don't I pour you one? And if you don't want to drink, you are the I'll... last person I would ever drink with again. I'm gonna make this fast. So listen up. I'm going out of town for a few days, and I wanted to come deliver this in person. You stay away from Rachel. She's my niece. I'm not doing her any harm. It's cool. You did hear what I said, didn't you? 
I'm being nice to Rachel because Rachel's being nice to me. She believes in me. She understands people can no, change. No, she's young. She's impressionable. She wants to trust people, especially someone from her own family. And I'm grateful she's willing to trust. Well, I don't trust you, you see, and I don't trust this marvelous conversion of yours. And I don't trust you anywhere near Rachel. Hey, baby, don't. I'm not your baby. I'm your enemy. You better know your enemy, RJ. I'm very close with Commissioner Buchanan, and the police are going to be following you around while I'm gone. Let me tell you something. I swear you go anywhere near Rachel, and you will wish you were anywhere but here. Ooh. Oh, go ahead, Mrs. Neer. <laughs> do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look up every illegal activity you've been doing, and I'm going to get Hank to really stick it to you. I'm going to spend seven more years in the slammer, RJ. Excuse me, Nora, but I don't believe you're exactly in the position to threaten me. Now, are you? I think that goes both ways. That's what you call a stalemate. Let's just call it a stalemate. And you just make sure it stays that way. Whatever you say, Nora. Good. You want me to stay away from Rachel while you're gone? Yes. You got it. Fine. Don't forget. Come on, so cold, baby. Now, you weren't always Don't like... you ever! Touch me again. There you go. Junk food for a couple old junkyard dogs. You're a lucky fellow, Bo. Yeah, I know. Sometimes I walk in a room and I see Nora stand there, and all of a sudden I find myself just grinning ear to ear. I know the feeling. Clint, now don't get your back up about this, okay? What? I think you should take Nora up on her offer to uh, find somebody for you. I'm sorry I growled at you before. Actually, I, uh, I'm grateful for the offer. The problem is, somebody just won't do. I mean, you never know. You see, the fact is, there's only one woman in the world for me, and there's nothing I can do about that. The problem is that uh, Vicky's going to be marrying someone else in a few weeks. Don't. Yeah. We just, we got our invitation yesterday. Yeah, I know. The only thing that keeps me from going half crazy thinking about it is that Sloan Carpenter is actually a pretty decent fellow. So all I can do is hope that she's happy. I'm sorry you had to overhear that, Vicki. Well, I did. <laughs> So what is it you're going to tell me the truth about? Sloan? Well, I would rather not go into that right now. <clears throat> the fact is, Vicki, Sloan has not been completely open with you about a problem he is facing. Beverly, please don't. I think I, I might know what it is. You're having a lot of problems at the university, darling, aren't you? What gives you that idea? Andrew told Well, I forced him to tell me what was wrong. It's some sort of threatened strike is what he said. I mean, it's, it's... I don't understand why you feel you have to keep all these problems to yourself. I mean, I guess I see why you didn't want to tell me while I was in Arizona, but Beverly's quite right. There's absolutely no reason why you can't tell me now. Oh, come on. It can't be that bad. Listen, I really do have to be going. It's been a long day, and... Well, listen, before you go... I, I, you know, I realized that I had mailed out most of the invitations to the wedding when I was in Arizona, but I didn't mail yours because I had lost your address, and I happened to have the invitation in the car. But, Vicki, it's really all right. Well, I certainly hope that you will be able to come. Your friendship has meant so much to Sloan. And you certainly have been through a lot together, haven't you? Yes. We have had to face some things that we thought, at the time, we'd never be able to handle. Well, of course, I haven't known him nearly as long as you have, but unfortunately, we've also had to face some crises together. Yes, I, I understand uh -huh. you were quite ill before your trip. Yes, I was. 
And then, of course, you know about the uh, scare he gave us, don't you? Well, thank God we're better now. In fact, all, all well and better than ever. And looking forward to a lifetime of happiness. I'm going to go and get that invitation. I'll be right back. She loves you so much. Sloan, even if there is just a little time, you mustn't take that away from her. You just hear her. She's looking forward to a happy future. Just to help me, Bev. Help me to spare her the agony of another death watch. She has a future. With her family and her ex-husband. Beverly. Let me go out with some dignity. Help me. Help me to spare her. Dear God in heaven, I give anything to this not to be happening. I give anything. Some people say I'm quiet, but you didn't say a word the whole way over here. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm pretty lousy company tonight. Well, maybe you're just tired. Yeah, that too. So, uh, about this house, about by the old mill, uh, you excited? Yeah, actually I am. About time, you know, some place I can call my own. It's a great place. Views, trees, water. Yeah, sounds terrific. Yeah, you know, old places like that. You just imagine all the memories they got in the walls. It's kind of romantic, huh? Romantic? No, not exactly. You know, stop me if I'm out of line, but you've been sad all night long. I'm sorry. Sorry. No, forget sorry. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, we're good enough friends now that I think I can just level with you, so I'm just going to come out and say, you know, about this difficult relationship that you keep talking about, um, is it still going on? Because something's bothering you tonight. Is it the guy? Dear God, give me the strength, the courage, and the wisdom to do the right thing, always. Dear God, give me the strength, the courage, and the wisdom to do the right thing. What? Are you still upset about running into Max and Luna like that? Is that still bothering you? Oh, no, I... Look, I can't help it. <laughs> if she got upset when she saw me having a good time dancing the night away, and I have to admit that I got a little touchy when, when she was upset, <laughs> but, but that's... I'm sorry, honey, you got a little more than touchy there for a while. Okay, well, and yes, I did yell at you when you ran off to her to defend her and dumped me, and no. I... Okay, I sneered at you, and I did call you one of Luna's knights in shining armor, so there. Okay. Oh, good, just so long as you're still not upset about that. <laughs> I'm not. But I want to ask you something. Okay. Gut honest. Mm -hmm. No word games, all right? Yeah, of course. Go ahead, shoot. How do you really feel about Luna? Don't, don't you just a little bit love her the way that Max thought? Look, Blair, even if that were true... Uh-huh. I wouldn't talk about it. Luna is off limits. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that you were so virtuous 
that you wouldn't even consider adultery? Look, I don't know where you get off thinking I'm some kind of Dudley do right. Oh, thing. please, that's because you are, Cord. You really? Oh, thank you. you very are, much. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. I am not saying that to make fun of you. I, th I think that it's great. I really, I do. Because most guys, they, most guys wouldn't say that or couldn't say that. No way, she's off limits. They wouldn't. And couldn't. See, I disagree with that. I think most people try to live their lives by some set of standards. I think even the best of us have a hard time with that. Well, then you're talking about temptation, then. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, in that case, then, I think maybe you're right. I think everybody gets tempted now and again. In fact, uh, I'm very tempted right now myself. <laughs> and I guess it's a good thing that I'm not quite the uh, straight arrow you made me out to be. Huh? Oh, thank God. <laughs> hey, Clint. Hey, how you doing? Uh, what are you doing here? Oh, I, uh, just on my way home. I've been over at Bo's. What was going on in the park here tonight? Uh, boys club. They had a fair. It was great. Mm -hmm. Sorry I missed it. Well, gentlemen, I tell you what. Excuse me. I'm going to head out of here home by myself. Well, no, no. Let me walk you home. No, no, no. I, I saw the lights on over at the rectory, and I'm going to go see how Cassie's doing. I think she could probably leave, use a friend right now anyway. Clint, it's good to see you. Mm. Cord, I had a great time tonight. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you too. Good night. So long. <laughs> All right, well, go ahead. Go ahead, tell me how my life is going to go to hell in a handbasket if I keep hanging out <laughs> no, with no, Blair No, Daymer. no, no, no. Believe me, I'm the last person in the world to give advice to anybody about their love life. I was just saying good night to Sloan. I, I really do have to be off. Here is your invitation, and I hope that you can make it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Good night, Vicky. Good night, Bev. See you tomorrow. Good night. My, 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 isn't she lovely? Certainly is. And she's much nicer than even you said. Well, I just couldn't do her justice. Prettier, too. She's always been one of Marilyn's finest. Well, she's gone now. So I get you all to myself. Um, ever since I arrived, you've been behaving very strangely. What's the matter? Why did you pull away from me just now? Please, tell me what's wrong. Handsome. Hello, gorgeous. What you reading? Ugh, that stuff? Well, just because you memorized it in law school. Ugh. Modern romance novels are much better than that. Ooh. I think the real thing is much better than that. Ooh, the commissioner. So you feel better? About what? About all the loose ends that you had to tie up. Yeah. At your office? Oh, yeah, at the office, yeah. All done. All done? Mm -hmm. So you don't feel bad about leaving? Nope. And you're going to let all the other cops on Maytag just worry about this R.J. again? And... Yeah. No, I mean, I think you're right. I, I think uh, R.J. will probably not bother Rachel. Well, good. And you can just go and relax and concentrate on your dad's recovery, huh? That's tomorrow. Tonight, I'm going to kiss a certain someone goodbye and leave memories forever branded on his mind. 
Sure, that sounds great. Do I know this guy? Shut up and kiss me. Hi, Rachel. It's your old Uncle RJ. <laughs> no message, really. Just, uh, hope you got the flowers. I know things are probably crazy at law school with the reading and classes and all, but in a few weeks, if you find you have a little spare time, I'd love to see you. You got my number, just give me a call. All right, I'm out. Peace. Look, if you don't want to tell me anything, you don't have to. There's nothing for me to say about this relationship. It was doomed, it was doomed right from the very start. Well, that's rough, but what are you gonna do about it? I don't know. I guess I'll learn to live with it. Seems to be all I'm doing lately, picking up the pieces and moving on. Well, if it's so doomed, then doesn't that mean you're free? No. I wish it did. I... No, I'm not, I'm not free. You know, I don't get it. I mean, here we got this beautiful, intelligent, interesting woman. And then there's this guy, whoever he is. Uh, what a lucky guy. Thank you. Well, I'm not just saying that either. I mean it. I mean, you know, I just hope he understands how lucky he is. Because you only deserve the best, Marty. And I don't want you to ever settle for anything less, all right? Thanks. You know, any woman would be lucky to have you, too. Good night. Night. do this, please. Obviously, something is wrong. Can't you just tell me what it is? Something's happened. All right. I don't know quite how to tell you this. Well, can't you just say it? I mean, whatever it is, we'll deal with it together. Just tell me. Sweetheart, look, if it's these problems at the university, if they're so severe that it's going to be so complicated to have a wedding, well, we'll just postpone the wedding, that's all. Sloane, is that it? There's not going to be a wedding. I can't marry you. 